With the release of RuneScape 3 on Steam within Reach, a surge of new players will be coming into the game. I already have a couple of beginner guides, one of which I will actually mention and link in the description in this video. This video will still focus on beginner guidance, but it will also consist of tips and tricks, useful shortcuts, and other information you most definitely want to know as a new or returning player. And in this video, I'm going to be covering everything you need to know about combat. So whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. In RuneScape you do not have combat classes, instead you have combat styles, being melee, ranged, and magic. In RuneScape we have something called the combat triangle, where ranged beats out magic, magic beats out melee, and melee beats out ranged. This is based on common logic that, for example, an arrow will have far less difficulty going through some majestic robes than going through full plate armor. Next up, combat variables. RuneScape has life points, adrenaline, prayer points, and summoning points. Life points are pretty straightforward, but can be increased by certain boosts, and are determined by your constitution level, which is trained by different combat skills. You always gain one-third of your total common experience in constitution experience, meaning if you were to get 1,000 common experience total, 333.33 of that experience would be gained in constitution and the rest would be divided over your combat skill. Adrenaline is gained by using combat abilities and this is the fuel for your more powerful threshold and ultimate abilities. More on this later. Prey points are the fuel for your prayer boost like protection prayers that can reduce damage or curses that can increase your damage and drain your opponent's stats. Summoning points just like prayer points are increased by leveling up the skill, however summoning points are only drained if you have a familiar active and if you use the familiar special ability the points will be drained even quicker. You can use potions for both of these skills to recharge your points however. In RuneScape 3 there's a little strange difference in where magic Magic and ranged increase both your accuracy and damage in the skill when using weapons that are related to the skill, while melee is split into two different skills, being attack and strength. Attack increasing your accuracy and letting you use higher tier weapons, and strength increasing your raw damage output. Defense is a skill that can be trained with both melee, magic, and ranged. Defense raises your chance to block incoming damage and reduces damage you take the higher your defense level is. There are no tanks in RuneScape 3, there's no actual rules, but the higher your defense level is, the better you'll be at tanking, and the higher tier of armor you can actually wear. Something I really feel is important to mention is the combat level of players and opponents or enemies in RuneScape 3. Please do not ever refer to combat level as a good indicator of how hard an enemy will be. It doesn't mean much in RuneScape 3. The recommended combat level for some of the bosses in the Beast tab also just aren't very accurate and don't take into account different account builds or people having higher and lower stats combined. It's just a tip, ignore the combat level requirements, it's not a good indicator of how hard a boss will really be. Next up are equipment slots. Now there are a bunch of equipment slots and as a new player this won't be as relevant for you but you might be wondering what these equipment slots are for, what kind of items go in them and so on. So as you can see, most of the gear slots should be familiar to you if you've played an MMO before. You have your cape, amulet, ammo slot, main hand and offhand, so you can dual wield, your body, helmet, legs, boots, gloves, ring, but RuneScape has two different slots which you might not be familiar with. A pocket slot and an aura slot. These two slots won't immediately be relevant to you as a new player, but later down the line you're going to be using porters, god books, scrimshaws, your charming imp, and items like that in your pocket slot. As for auras, these are items you can activate for a certain period of time that give you certain boosts in both skilling and combat. A bunch of auras can be obtained through the PVM hub which I'll also be covering in this video. One thing I'd like to mention though is that you can favor auras you have by clicking the start icon in your aura interface as seen on screen which will allow you to quickly activate auras when in combat or doing something else instead of going to your interface manually and then activating it there. 
In RuneScape 3, you have three different combat modes, being Revolution, Full Manual, and Legacy Combat Mode. If you're a newer player or a returning player, you want to stick to Revolution for the majority of your RuneScape 3 playtime. Full Manual is only beneficial if you plan to make the most out of your damage and you want full control over your abilities. As you can see, if I don't use abilities in full manual, my character will simply just cast a spell and not use abilities. You will have to manually press each of your abilities. Legacy combat mode, on the other hand, is the old version of RuneScape and doesn't really have many benefits, and in most situations this will be a worse combat mode, but it's very easy to use as you don't need to press any buttons. Like I said, stick to revolution if you're watching this video. It's so, so much easier, and I think if you make a new account, it should automatically be set to that combat mode as well. If it isn't for whatever reason, go to your combat settings as seen on the video by pressing escape, settings, combat and action bar and go to combat mode and select revolution. And then proceed by ticking off the boxes to automatically use threshold and ultimate abilities as well. Under the combat and action bar settings, you can also find a setting called combat experience in which you can change what experience you actually gain when training combat. As a thing to keep in mind, always train your attack and magic and range level above your defense level so you can use higher tier weapons as armor is less relevant in RuneScape 3, especially early on. Now that you have your combat mode set up, it's time to set up your action bar. Click the lock on your action bar to unlock it to be able to add abilities to it by drag and dropping the abilities on the action bar. And if you want to drag around your action bar itself around your interface, press L to unlock your entire interface. You'll now be able to drag and resize anything on screen. If you wish to change the actual keybind of a certain ability slot on your action bar, you can right click and choose customize keybind and then press any keybind on your keyboard to change the key bound to that slot. Alright, so you know how to create an action bar and how to edit it, it's time to actually make an action bar that's functional. Here are some dual wield and two handed weapon action bars that are some basic examples of what you should be using with revolution combat mode. Now it may well be that some of these abilities aren't unlocked yet because you require a certain level in those skills, for example at the top some of those abilities do require a higher range level than one, but just copy the action bar as you level up and you should be fine for your first 50 levels. Now like I said there are abilities on here that you won't have unlocked even at level 50 but I decided to put them on the bar anyways in case someone watches this video and sticks to the bar for a longer period of time. Again these bars are just to get familiar with the combat system and they will be relatively optimal for your lower level training. Because at the beginning of the game it doesn't really matter that much if your DPS rotation is crazy good. For most monsters you'll be killing at the start of the game you will only be using using slots 1 to 8. Okay, so you have an action bar, but what types of abilities are there? You have basic abilities, which generate adrenaline, which you can see on your action bar. You have thresholds, which use adrenaline and require 50% adrenaline to be activated. And you have ultimate abilities, which require and use 100% adrenaline. You can categorize abilities into more subtypes, but there's no reason to know everything about abilities so early on in the game. I do quickly want to cover two examples being bleed and cancellation abilities. First of all, the bleeds, fragmentation, shot, combust, and slaughter can have the damage improved if you end up moving the enemy. For combust and fragmentation shot, this will be double the damage per hit, and with slaughter it will be triple the damage per hit. You can walk your opponent by walking underneath them and making them forcefully move, or walking away and dragging the opponent along. As for channeled abilities, as a newer player, let the other four you can see on this list simply go through. Don't do anything to cancel them out because you'll miss out on damage. As for the other two on that list, being Fury and Concentrated Blast, what you want to do is use a second ability after using those abilities as fast as you can. You can easily see this happening by looking at your action bar and as soon as the abilities have done that clock formation, you're able to use another ability straight away, which is what you would do to cancel out Concentrated Blast and Fury. This is an example of doing it wrong. And this is an example of doing it right. I also quickly want to mention another example being Snipe. This is one of the most powerful ranged abilities, but it takes some time to charge up and then you shoot the arrow and hit the opponent. The problem is you can easily use another ability within this time period and basically cancel out your damage here by just cancelling out the ability altogether, meaning you charged up the ability for absolutely no reason. 
Now that you know a bit about action bars and abilities, did you know you can bind action bars to a certain combat style or even weapon style? In your action bar settings, under action bar binding, you can bind your action bar to either dual wield or two handed weapons of a particular style. This is a quality of life thing you can use to your advantage if you're switching your weapon style often. You just pre-make all of your action bars and bind them to your desired weapon style. You can also activate multiple action bars in your settings if you like to have other action bars on screen with certain keybinds that are not combat related. For example, keybinding your food to eat quickly during combat, a tip I will cover in just a second as well. In your constitution ability section, there's an ability called Eat Food. If you keybind this Eat Food ability to your action bar, you can eat any type of food you have in your inventory by just simply pressing that keybind. This is incredibly useful if you're using different types of food often, and if you're leveling up your account, this is essential. There's also another tip I will cover in this video, but it's not as relevant for newer players. It's called Tick Eating, which is basically using your Eat Food keybind and another keybind for sourdome and brews, or even a third keybind for blubber jellyfish food, a separate type of food, allowing you to eat multiple pieces of food in the same game tick. This is a useful PVM trick to survive PVM situations where you need to heal up very quickly. Another thing worth mentioning is the auto-retaliate button on your action bar. If you disable auto-retaliate, you won't automatically attack a monster that attacks you. This can have benefits in some combat situations, especially during bossing. However, if you wish to AFK a monster and you're certain you won't die and won't need food, you can turn this button on to automatically attack a creature attacking you. One of the best quality of life things in RuneScape 3 is area loot, allowing you to check out a bunch of loot on the floor and select whatever you want to pick up, or use spacebar to pick up everything in one single go. In fact, you can even open up the interface to area loot using a keybind. You can activate area loot by pressing escape, going to gameplay, going to item drops, going to loot system, and then clicking area loot and ticking off the box. To keybind area loot, you need to click on the controls tab and scroll all the way down until you find area loot at the right side. You can then open up area loot whenever you want in combat by simply pressing that keybind. Very, very useful. Another thing conveniently placed on your action bar is the quick prayers button. Right click your prayer button and you can set up a bunch of prayers by just clicking the button once. You can create multiple presets by selecting the prayers you want in your preset, give your preset a name and then simply right click or left click your prayer button to activate the preset. The final thing I'm going to mention in this section of the video is truly taking some time to check out and explore the entirety of the interface. Press L to unlock the interface and start making it the way you want your interface to look by dragging and resizing things around. You can change all kinds of things by going to edit layout mode after pressing escape and then literally go to advanced mode and resize everything you want to resize you can literally customize every single thing in your interface. You can even add a Slayer counter and an in-game clock. I recommend turning these things on and dragging your buff and debuff bar towards your action bar. This way you can see what things are buffed and what things are debuffed. These bars are used to showcase whenever you have a lower defense level because of a boss or drained stats, or show you if your stats are buffed by your potions. But yeah, take some time and explore the interface and settings, as this will enlighten you as a new or returning player. Trust me, it's worth it. Just go through everything once, and you should be good to go. It's time to go through some common misconceptions and important information about RuneScape PVM and combat. First of all, shields absolutely suck. They are trash. Do not use a main hand weapon and a shield to reduce damage or whatever your plan was. In RuneScape, it is better to use dual wield weapons or a main hand two handed weapon at all times. The only exceptions in this game are when you're doing a tanking role and you need the defensive abilities. Other than that, shields are only really used for a switch, for example, using the Resonance ability, which is very important by the way, to heal from an incoming hit. 
Next up is using tank armor over power armor. In RuneScape, generally speaking, you're going to want to use power armor at all times. The easiest way to recognize power or DPS armor is by looking at the armor for strength bonus. If the armor has strength bonus, this means it is a DPS armor set. If it doesn't and it gives you a life point bonus, it is tank armor and not DPS armor. I've made a full video about this and the reason you want to do this is because defense bonus doesn't necessarily matter much in RuneScape and you're better off using DPS armor to get higher damage or just bigger hits in general. Basically, DPS armor means more damage, shorter fights, less food used. Another thing I'd like to cover is upgrading your weapon over your armor. Sometimes in RuneScape I see players buying expensive high tier armor without upgrading the weapon. Generally speaking it is always better to upgrade your weapon over your armor as you'll get more damage out of it. There is more to it and I do have a full video covering this topic which I'll link in the description below. The next thing I want to cover is death and death costs. If you die in RuneScape 3, you get sent to death's office, where you can reclaim your gear by using your coins. You do not wish to do this if you are using items that are not degradable, as there is no reason to if you are able and you are sure that you can run back to your grave within 2 minutes because this way you can just claim your gear for free. You do not want to do this if you're using degradable gear, because if you do not reclaim your gear, your gear will lose 20% of its charge on death. Just a tip, I don't think there's many players that know this, but if you're using degradable gear, always reclaim your gear from death. It is a little expensive, but it's going to be worth it. Further down the line, you can also purchase a Ring of Death if your death costs to reclaim are getting too high. Something else worth mentioning is the group system, which can be accessed by clicking the community button, and then you can start making your own group. This group system is used to teleport everyone and their party members to certain bosses, but can also be used for common scams. Do not just randomly join a player's group and drop your items on the floor because they will teleport you away and have someone else pick your items up. I have a video called Avoid These Common Scams and Lures for you to check out if interested, linked in the description below covering more about this topic. To finish up your group, select a boss, Update your group, ready up, and have, if you have party members, all of them ready up. Click the blue icon as seen, complete your group, and then you'll be able to finalize or teleport all party members, even if you're on your own. This is an excellent way of transporting yourself and friends to bosses easily. In RuneScape, for each combat style, you have a different formula to calculate your ability damage. However, for the majority of players, this is not very interesting. Two things you should know, however, as a newer overturning player, is that your spell damage is capped to the tier of your magic weapon. Meaning, if you're using a higher tier spell with a lower tier staff, you won't get more damage per se, so there's no reason to use extra runes. With ranged, it's the same thing. Your ammunition is capped to the tier of your ranged weapon. Here's an interesting overview showing you what happens if you use a certain weapon tier and a certain spell. Another thing worth mentioning briefly in this guide is monster weaknesses. Now we did cover the combat triangle being ranged magic and melee, for example melee beats ranged, ranged beats magic and magic beats melee. But monsters in this game can have a specific weakness, for example against stab weapons, and if you were to use stab weapons over let's say crushing weapons, you would have more accuracy against said creature. But for the majority of the creatures in this game, you should be fine using simply the weakness class against said creature. So, for example, if a creature is weak to crossbows, if you end up using any ranged weapon, you should be fine most of the time, unless they have a ridiculously high defense level. It's kind of hard to say anything about this because there's many variables involved, including your stats. The higher your stats are, the higher your accuracy will be anyways. One very important area to unlock in 2020 is the PVM hub, and this is available to all players. You can unlock this area by touching Death's Insignia near the Draenor Lodestone. The PVM hub is an area where you can allocate portals to bosses to get to bosses even quicker than before. This used to be part of the Max Guild. Now it's available to all players. 
There's an NPC which will allow you to buy a bunch of things including auras like vampirism, penance and the zerk auras for a amount of marks of war. Marks of war are a currency gained from killing bosses and as a new player this won't be relevant to you yet but as you get into the mid game this will be very important as these are the best auras in game for combat. You can also get yourself adrenaline crystals to build up your adrenaline, a PVM hub teleport, unlimited bonfire boost access by clicking on the fire, and much more. This is an area I would start using as soon as you can. You even have access to dummies to test out your rotations, damage, abilities, or whatever you want to see. Even your max hit if you turn it to max hit mode. This area is hands down the most useful area as a PVMer or someone who enjoys combat. RuneScape players, especially PVMers, like to use certain shortcuts instead of typing out full words or sentences, so here are some common slang or common shortcuts for words or sentences in RuneScape 3. If you want more of these, go ahead and check the wiki link in the description covering all of these. If you ever have difficulties during PVM seeing certain things around the boss arena, what you can do is use the skybox filters to your advantage to light up an area or darken it for whatever reason. You can do this by right clicking your old map, selecting skybox filters and turning on different ones. We are nearing the end of this video, so I want to end off the video with some final information you would want to know or things you probably would have asked in the comments down below. Here are a bunch of long-term goals to strive for related to RuneScape 3 combat. I mention whenever these things are relevant in many of my video guides, and if you're getting into combat, I do have a plethora of guides for PVM and Slayer. So if you ever need anything RuneScape related, just type in Protox and then whatever you need to find, and I will most likely have a guide for it. As for these things on screen, if you're looking for information about anything in RuneScape, be sure to use the slash wiki command in-game, and then type Maniacal Aura or Overloads or Ring of Vigor, and it will show you the information you need to know about that item and any questions you might have. Here's a list of useful communities for RuneScape related PVM things. Now. If you're watching this as a completely new player, most of these discords will not be relevant to you for a long, long time. However, the official RuneScape Discord and my own Discord are important to you. If you have any questions, feel free to pop in and ask away. If I'm not there to reply, I'm sure one of my advisors will or another player will be able to help you out. And with that being said, this guide has come to an end. I hope you learned something new. If you did, feel free to leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing. And if you're looking for more information about RuneScape 3 Combat, I do have a playlist called Getting Into PvP for more in-depth information because RuneScape is such a complex game. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.